Welcome to another episode of Cyberbytes, the podcast being recorded live here from Las Vegas at Black Cat 2025. I'm about to sit down with Elizabeth Namor, the CEO and founder of Telescope, a leading up and coming data security company. Let's dive in. All right. Introducing Lizzie Namor. Hi, nice to meet you. Founder and CEO at Telescope. How are you? Good. How about yourself? Good, good, good. It's been a busy day already. Okay. Like I say, I'm still feeling <laughs> a bit jet lagged from flying in yesterday, but whereabouts have you Must flown in from? Exhausting. New York. So much easier. You just opened yourself. a new office. What? Have you just opened a new office? Yes, we did. Fabulous. Yeah, Where's yeah. that? In the financial district. Okay. Yeah. So big enough for us to grow like three times, which is exciting. Nice, nice. Yeah. So you born and bred New York or? No, I'm from Lebanon. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so raised there and then moved to the States like 12 years ago now. So you emigrated, was that to study or what was Yeah, the... to study, yeah. Awesome, yeah. what University. did you study? Where did you? Where did Computer you... science at UPenn. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> and then what was the first role out of studying? What was the? The first what? What was your first role out Role? Of I went to Airbnb. So I worked there for four and a half years. That's where I built their internal data security platform and decided to spin it out into Telescope. So I nice. got lucky with my first job. Yeah, 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 yeah. How was the transition going from working like Airbnb to then like thinking, right, I'm going to be a, a founder? I think it's so different, right? Like, cause one, you're basically building software for one company. Now I need to kind of sell software to a bunch of companies. So yeah. You, you did it on your own? You, you, what Found, do you mean? Founded the company on your own? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How come you didn't think, right, let's get a co-founder or so, what's pretty ballsy <laughs> to... I had a co-founder oh. and then things did not work <laughs> out. And so now I'm a solo founder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about the, the problem space. I know you're obviously in the, the data security. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about the problem that you're, you guys are solving? Yeah, so a lot of companies store a bunch of data and that data is messy, overly permissive. And now with AI enablement, it's really risky uh, because you don't know where that data is going to end up. So we want to help our customers automatically understand, but also secure and enforce remediation on their data. Yeah, yeah, nice. How, yeah. how do you go about it at Telescope? How are you, yeah. how are you doing that? So we first scan our um, customers' data. We connect to their data at rest, whether it's in the cloud, on-premise, in SaaS applications. We can help them understand and classify their data, the business context, who has access to it, um, other insights on the riskiness of the data. And then they can implement policies to enforce that remediation. So mm -hmm. if we find sensitive credit card numbers in this folder, redact it, or move it to this other folder, or delete it. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we seed stage at the moment? Are yes, you? we are. Okay, yeah. great. And when yeah. when did you fundraise, and how? So we fundraised uh, our seed round a year and a few months ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's an interesting one because I feel like data security. There's like there's a number of other. There's business. a lot of players. There's a lot. Yeah. How are you like separating yourself in the noise of it all? I think the main thing with the other players in the market is they're focusing on this visibility component. So scanning your data and showing you everything that's wrong with it. I think where those tools start to fail is that there's too many things that are wrong that it's impossible for a human to fix. Mm. Um, and that's where we want to come in, kind of reducing the manual labor that goes into the fixes. Yeah. yeah. Are you already deployed with customers? Have yes, got... yeah, we have around 18 customers now, mid-market and enterprise. Got so, it. Yeah. I think I was looking at your LinkedIn, there's a case study, is it the Atlantic? Yes, Can yeah, you tell us a little bit company. about that? Yeah. yeah, yeah, so they're a small team. They needed help to understand their data and also enforce deletions of data for specific customers or redacting sensitive data from places where it shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. um, and that was kind of the use case, helping a team of three kind of 10x, yeah. Yeah, yeah. How was it um, going through that fundraising process and who did you... Uh, decide to, to fundraise with? So we raised from primary venture capital. I think yeah. something that was important to us at the time was to find a VC that was in New York so we could kind of build yeah, yeah. that personal rapport. And it was just a really fun process. It's very different, right? Selling to your company to VCs yeah, yeah. For, for their equity or selling com your product to customers. So Who was the yeah. investor for, for that? Tobias or? Uh, Tobias and Brian. Nice. If you're familiar with them. Yeah, yeah. yeah Have yeah. you been using their office space? Or? No, we should, We didn't that know that they offered this. Yeah. But we had I'm not yeah, sure if they do. We had an, no, they do. We had an office at the time, so we couldn't take advantage of it. But yeah. yeah How yeah. do you know them? Well, it's just from, from the industry okay. and just knowing, yes, it's Tobias is great, uh, great dude. I was just, um, he mentioned that they've got a beautiful like event space. So whenever I'm in town, he said that we 
we could uh, potentially do something together. It's an amazing space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they've how, done a bunch of events. How here. was that fundraising process then? Like, like first of all, you've got been at Airbnb in a practitioner role, and then you've decided to found a business. And yeah, then you're now looking to fundraise based on the yeah, idea. Yeah, it's like, interesting because it's like it's a pro and a con for some people, right? A pro is that you felt the problem firsthand and so it's a legit problem versus something you've kind of made up in your mind mm. um but the other part is that you are a first-time founder and that obviously comes with some risk too mm. so it depends kind of on the vc and like what persona do they enjoy from a founder do they want a practitioner based founder or someone that has started a company in the past yeah. or had more of like a business uh background how many yeah. did you like uh, meet how many do you think like vcs in the end it's interesting. I would say maybe like 10 to 15 for our seed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I was thinking if you're looking for New York specifically and to have some sort of cyber specialism. Yeah, yeah. So at the time, cyber specialism wasn't something we were necessarily looking for, mainly a partner that could help us grow because we felt that we had kind of expertise in the problem space. Now we are like for our next partner, we are looking for someone with cyber expertise who can kind of help us mm. Um increase our go-to-market plan yeah, yeah. and expertise in that in cyber. How's it been working with Primary? How have Amazing. they been? Tell us a bit more about the support and things like that. How they? I think they're like a really great investor. Like they can basically also like really help your team. They have a huge operating team, so they can help you with things like recruiting. Um, yeah, go-to-market, all of that. Yeah. Mm, brilliant. Yeah. When you, um, so when did the idea around Telescope come about? When did you decide like what was the to pivotal moment yeah so yeah so i had spent four and a half years building the prop like yeah building the tool at airbnb and then we posted a few blog posts around it um and then we had other security folks reach out saying they were building almost the same thing um so i was like hmm, maybe we should start a company around this problem we now know we've built a first version that obviously was not optimal. Now we can rewrite it with all the lessons that we've learned from building it at a company at Airbnb. Mm. Um, yeah. What's the product? Like, is there a suite of products within Telescope or is it just one? Or can you tell us a bit more about the features? How this... Right now it's one platform. Um, we sell based on the integration type. Okay. So what we're connecting to is kind of how we price the product. Like mm -hmm. you want data security on your on-prem file share we can do that it's a different price than if you want to do it on like your g suite mm. who is the like icp or like target market you, yeah yeah um i would say right now it's mid enterprise mid enterprise, yeah, mid -enterprise. Okay. what would you consider mid enterprise what's the so yeah anywhere between like a thousand and maybe fifteen thousand mm -hmm. employees and who's the buyer who would you say is usually like the... security we have sometimes data kind of be a buyer yeah. um, as well but mainly security how are you finding like with the adoption of now all these um, like particularly like generative AI and yeah. how are you seeing that now as a risk for particularly it, data like uh, loss I guess and prevention? For sure. I think like customers are now actively scared about turning on these types of tools or training their own models on their data because they don't know where that data is going to go. Um, so, for example, a big use case for us is customers want to turn on Copilot on their SharePoint and OneDrive, mm. but they're worried that they have all these files that have sensitive data that are shared in, at, across the entire company or shared with users that shouldn't see it. And so if they turn on Copilot, then someone can easily search, hey, show me all of our employees' salary bands. Mm. And it would yeah. surface that because they have access to that file. Whereas in the past, it would be really hard for them to find that file manually. So this is why it's kind of like making this risk yeah. much larger because it can surface information much easier. Mm. Yeah. How are you adopting AI within the business? Oh, our whole tool is based on AI, but models that we run and host internally. So we're not sending the data out to an external model or third party. Mm -hmm. Everything is run within our platform. Yeah, yeah. So anything from the detection piece to the remediation piece, we've incorporated small language models, machine learning and AI. Love that. Yeah. You mentioned earlier about being a first time founder for those that yeah. potentially might be interested in actually building and going for it. Yeah. Like, what advice would you give them? Just do it. Do you reckon? <laughs> just, just go for it. Because <laughs> if you think about it too much, then you'll get stressed out and get freaked out about yeah, it. Yeah. But it's just like, just do it. Yeah. What has been one of the, like, the biggest lessons you think was... I think it's just like you constantly have to adapt and kind of change your role. Like when we first started, I was coding. Now I'm selling. 
And then in two months, I'm probably going to be focusing on company building and then we're going to have sellers. So it's kind of like you have to adapt to every yeah. phase and learn how to work that phase. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You mentioned obviously working closely with primary. Have you worked with any other like strategic advisors or anyone that you took real mentorship from? Yeah, we've had a few. I mean, one particular was Doug Dooley. He is um, the CEO at another security company and he's helped us so much from like understanding how to sell to CISOs, what to do and kind of on that go-to-market approach for yeah. sure yeah, yeah yeah how um so obviously how long have you been telescopes been founded for now so i guess two and a half years now okay yeah. cool yeah. So two and a half years in yeah what's the next two and a half years look like from a product or company well, let's, perspective? yeah let's, you you can tell me what you want with it but <laughs> what do you think i think our vision is basically like companies could kind of upload their security and privacy policies into our tool and we would basically just enforce them automatically. Mm, yeah. So that's kind of like where we want to go. And yeah, hopefully that vision resonates with customers. How do you think the, do you think the industry will go that way? Do you think the industry will follow it? I think so. I think it's like building blocks, right? Like we're, we started with detection, now we're doing remediation, and then now we're adding this extra layer of agentic remediation where exactly this policy gets translated into agents that make decisions based mm. on what that policy suggests mm -hmm. so that's kind of like where we're going i think the industry and security as a whole is moving towards remediation mm. because people don't have time for another tool with dashboards and another tool with alerts yep. yeah how can uh, people get in touch for anyone that's interested yeah they can sign up for a demo on our website or just reach out to me directly.com Dot AI telescope AI. Dot AI. Yeah. you've gone for it love that yeah we did that two and did a half did you get years the dot ago. com as well though no we didn't but we should you it's kind of should. just parked there no one maybe owns it. oh really yeah. maybe get it before we release this and just in case we <laughs> okay. we're gonna get so much demand from oh it. absolutely well lizzie absolute pleasure <laughs> so nice coming on the show you, i really appreciate you coming in thank you so much for all yeah, the best the time all the best of all right. thank you very much bye